isn't. Stay away from the black face. Stay away from the black face. Stay away. Hello, everybody. So welcome to the So Walter Jones Show. I'm he. How y'all is? Uh, come on in. The water is fine. It's the weekend edition. Baby. Hey, blackface. Man, white folks been doing this. White folks been doing blackface. Well, since 1619 when y'all brought us over here on the boat. Um, blackface has been used by those in vaudeville uh, can't think of any of the names other than what's his name uh, uh, dear mammy uh my, what's his name i y'all type his name down there um white folks white people listen blackface is not a costume it is not. You who down there in the South, especially. Okay, you white folk down there in the South. I'm going to need y'all to stop. I'm going to need y'all to stop thinking that black folk ain't watching. Why would you think we ain't got social media? We got two eyes. We can see the pictures on Google Images. Every, every freaking year on a prom night, that uh, on, on Halloween night, uh, y'all having your parties with your masquerade parties. Some fool, Vonja, some fool, gonna go in his mama's cabinet or his daddy's uh, box in, in the garage and pull out some black, you know, and he gonna do this and think it's cute. And the fool gonna take a picture. And posted somewhere. Like it's cute. Like, oh, it's it's we're just we're just making fun. They make fun of us. You see. I can say cracker all day long and not get in trouble. If I was a politician, <laughs> now Willie Wilson kinda got a little bit in trouble. At least a weedy beady bit here. Willie Wilson is the he's running for um mayor of Chicago. He said whitey. He didn't say cracker, he said whitey. So he, he got a little bit in trouble on our news in Chicago. But black folk, we can call you cracker all day long, no problem. I don't care how big you are in politics. But if a white man in politics say, nigga, your career, by your head, it, it's over. Bye bye to your career. Why? It's a different day now. It ain't, this ain't your mama's or your daddy's Oldsmobile. This ain't your granddaddy's politics. You can't act a fool no more. You just can't. Vasha said he said Keebler Elf. <laughs> you can't. You can't act a fool. So white folks, leave black folks alone. I can put on white, white face all day long and not, not have a problem. Matter of fact, a lot of my black Folks are doing that. Look at... Uh, I don't know if I should say this. <laughs> look, look, look at Lil' Kim. <laughs> look, look, at the, look at the first lady at your church. She was born black. And she lived black face most of her life until she got up in, in the upper echelon of the religious world. She was traveling with maybe Jake's or somebody, and all of a sudden that, that black hue is turning into a white uh, sunset. <laughs> I thought your wife was black. She is. Where'd she go for vacation? Yeah, e even if she sat in the sun, you're supposed to get darker. <laughs> yeah, so we can turn white, but that wasn't a thing back in the 1900s. You understand what I'm saying? You understand. The thing in the back in the 1900s was the minstrel shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can't, 
you, 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 white folk, you can't. Now, you run for politics and you win mayor, governor, president of the United States, all right? When you was running, you should have been running back in your past and try to see if there are any pictures that you might need to explain. Mm. Mm. So when you don't, when you don't uh, um, expose whatever didn't happen to you, it's going to come. See, what, what you did 30 years ago, 40, 50 years ago, it's coming back. In this world we live in today, in this kind of political world, it's coming back. See, back in the early days, they protected you. Ah, uh, Roosevelt uh, was lame. Not not lame up here. He was lame down there. His legs wasn't working that great. And what he had, polio or something? He couldn't walk. But back then, they protected you. Even the news, the media protected the president. Notice, you can't find any video of the president of the United States or being held up or walking on, on a cane. Uh, usually his son, his son would, would carry him over, would be next to him, all right? You can't find any video. There's one video that's out there that's, that's about five seconds long, if that long, of Roosevelt walking like this. And and his son is I think his son is next to him and he's got the cane and he's walking like that. Other than that, you can't find no video. Nowhere. Why? Because they had a different mentality back then. The media believed they were they were a unified media and they believed that if you show the weakness of the president, the president represents the United States, which shows the weakness of the country. Y'all, y'all getting this? So they would, they, they took pictures and photos, but they never released them. They wouldn't. They won't. You won't find any. By, by this time, it's all buried and burned up and, and, and faded. You name it. All right. Back then, even if someone had a crusty past, all the way up to look at uh, President JFK. Yeah, he was a freak. He was a womanizer. JFK was a hoe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But we didn't know that until two years after he died. He was long gone before the truth started popping up about him, uh, the uh, the FBI guy. What's his name? What's the FBI guy back in that time who served all those presidents? But come to find out, he was a cross-dresser. I think he was a closet homosexual. Uh, what's his name? Okay. A lot of these things started popping up. About these presidents and these politicians. Why? Because back then they had a hush hush. <laughs> Thank you, Tyrone Gaston, the pastor. Thank you. Um, yeah, Hoover. Hoover was nasty. He was a freak. You know about it though. He was thirty years in the grave. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after Watergate and, and and tricky 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 Dick and yeah, the secretary was. Was that they did these things? The secretary. This, oh, the secrecy. I said secretary. Let me read it over here. The secrecy was that they did these things and didn't speak about it to each other. Look at Black Wall Street. Come on, Johanna. You better. You better preach this gospel. Yep. All right. Now, this Virginia man. Is what he said. He said that ain't me in the picture. That ain't me. Prior to today. Uh, for the past couple of days, he said, "I'm sorry, I did dress up in blackface. It was a, it was a time where we. That's just the things that you know. Back then, that's what they did. It was just normal. You didn't mess with races back then. You didn't race mess with xenophobes and bigots back then. That was the way of the South. That was the way of the of the of the at least the East Coast and the maritime area. That's just the way it was. Even here in Chicago, you was a bigot, and that was the way. It was natural. It was normal. You just that's just the way it was. Okay, and so you didn't get in trouble with the media back then because the media just they just understood that was the way of life. Even post. Jim Crow. That's just the way it was. As we got further into where blacks began to uprise in their intelligence uh, and stepping out and having some political force and power and having the the uh, the all the black caucus in the in the Senate and the Congress, the black congressional leaders and what have you. Once these these people of of uh, of 
prominence and power and persuasion began to come on the scene and, and, and pull a lot of black people to their side, white people began to see the strength in the black man, even through the Black Panther Party. All right, and all these things, you begin to see the power, and then white folks start, oh, oh, we can't do this because now you can't just say nigger, you can't just dress in black feet, you can't just treat uh, discriminate against blacks and, and they not say anything. You understand? So they they speaking up now. Now white folk are like, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, you can't. So white folk are uh, are rebuking other white folks. You can't, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, you can't. That ain't the way. You it ain't that way no more. Barack Obama came on the scene, and this, these white people in the South thought that they, it, that that way was still that way. It still was that way. They still have two uh, uh, proms in the South. There's a black prom, and there's a white prom in this high schools in the South. A lot of us, a lot of you didn't know that. All right. So when Barack Obama came on the scene, you start seeing these old racist white people be like, "What? Why would what?" What's wrong? Why would you correct me for doing something that just normal? This is the way it is in the South. No, it's not. Not no more. They they were so sleep. They were so removed removed from reality that they're wondering why. That's a nigger though. Why would you Why would you correct me? That's that's a nigger. He's always been a nigger. No, ma'am. He's 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 not. So when Barack Obama was running for president, these old crusty whites <laughs> were calling him all kind of stuff. And America then heard about it. Say, hey, hey, you can't be y'all still doing that in the South? Yeah, yeah, he's a nigger. Oh man, I'm trying to tell y'all, he just admitted to blackface and my yeah, that that's my next point, Bright. Um he was twenty five and a lawyer. He was fully grown, y'all. I was fully grown at nineteen. I was doing at nineteen I had the mentality of a forty five year old, okay? He twenty five in law school. Grown, and he tell my, uh, you know, that was way back, way back in 1984. Uh, 1984. Do you realize we by that time we didn't had a couple black folk run for president. Matter of fact, Jesse Jackson had was running for president in 1984. We had our first black um, uh, pre uh, mayor of Chicago, Harold Washington, in 1980. Well, he was dead by that. No, he was still alive. Harold Washington didn't die until 80. 87 85 87 yeah okay so we still we we still had we we had black prominence even in the supreme court we had okay so he's saying it's 80 it's 1984 it was a it was a long time ago it was the way i really and you were grown that's men that mentality has to go and put the block when found out. <laughs> put on the block, that is. Yeah. It's sad, isn't it, Johanna? Okay. So here's what he said, though. It, I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt because I felt so horrible for his wife sitting there trying to correct him. And she was pretty much like, okay, uh, uh, it's over now. It's, it's, baby, let's go. And he was like, he wanted to answer everybody's question. So I'm watching him and I'm tapping into the psychological the psychology of his attribute, his attitude, all right, the way he was handling it. He didn't want to leave. See, when somebody's caught with their pants down, ask me how I know. I've been here. When you caught in a scandal like this, you don't want to just answer a couple questions and leave. No. You get caught into a portal, a vortex, <laughs> okay, a conduit, all right. You get caught in there where you're afraid, you're too nervous to leave. But while you're there, you need you need to make sure you get your entire point across. And I know that I know that the uh, APA and um, the diagnostic uh, uh, they they gotta be they, they I know they gotta mention and it gotta be it's gotta be called something. Well, you just gotta answer all the questions all as much as you can because once you walk out of there, you want to make sure you can sleep good. But the wife didn't understand the mental state he was going through. Are y'all understanding that? She was, yeah, 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 she was looking like you, idiot. <laughs> uh, there were more blacks in the Senate in 1919 than any other time in U.S. history, but it only made racism worse. Oh, man, Johanna, you, you, you're making me go back in time. Ah, Roosevelt, I mentioned him earlier, was president at the time. Mm, and um, my alma mater, uh, Bethune Cookman College. Mary McLeod Bethune, at that time, was, uh, I guess you can say, 
the liaison to African Americans like what what what's the name was to to Donald Trump before Trump kicked her out the White uh, White House. What's her name? Mm -hmm. Well, she served in the same position as Mary McLeod Bethune. During the Roosevelt administration, one of his workers slapped a black uh, man or woman working in the government, okay? And he got to the White House. Roosevelt had to go into uh, mess control, what y'all call it? <laughs> So what he do? He picked up the phone, and he was asking his advisors to get in touch with Mary McLeod Bethune. Hurry up, because they knew that what you just did to this black person gonna get out to black folks. This was in the nineteen thirties, y'all. So you understand? It seemed like black folk didn't have a, a step up, but they did. They were very powerful. It's just that. You know, they, they still was working their way through uh, kicking against the pricks. And they've contacted Mary McLeod Bethune. And she just happened to be in a meeting with other black leaders at that time. So what did they do? They called her. And they said, put, put uh, uh, Bethune on the phone. Yes. I hope. They didn't have... Uh, music playing and because they didn't they couldn't but well, they didn't invent that yet and she was like hello now I've heard her voice before there's a recording of her voice you can hear on on go on YouTube and you can hear her voice and she talks very proper she talks very very proper um, and they said listen uh, one of your boys fall down he go boom she says yes and well we don't want to cause a disruption in America. We're already going through the stock market and crash, and we're going through a depression, so we really want to make sure that we keep the unity. So here's what we're going to offer you. You see what's happening here? Uh, you got somebody there that you can suggest to us because we have some openings in government. Who you got? And she gave some names. <laughs> and then we got some prominent people in positions. Y'all didn't know that, did you? Yeah. What, how did it happen? Yeah, it happened because one of Roosevelt's boys uh, hit one of our boys. And he made a deal. This governor, Ralph, Ralph uh, Northam, I felt for him because he was under pressure. He could be telling the truth about that's not that's not his picture, but he did admit that he did go in blackface because he did the moonwalk and won the award. <laughs> it's in black Michael Jackson face. He says, I didn't realize knows what he said. He says, I didn't know it was offensive in nineteen eighty four. I didn't know. That's the that's the world that these white people lived in, and many of them are still living in that same world. I didn't know it's offensive. I didn't know. Look at Donald Trump's uh, people, the people who voted for him, people in his cabinet. They're so far removed, they're like, oh, I didn't, I, I didn't know. It's Black History Month, y'all. Started yesterday, was it? Watch over the next four weeks. You're going to hear some really funny and strange things come out of white folks' mouths. <laughs> Last year, Donald Trump says to uh, Spritzer, whatever his chief guy talked about, was it who who was it? Douglas uh, Frederick Douglas. He, he mentioned, yeah, and Frederick Douglas is gonna do even greater works. <laughs> he talked about. He talked, they were bringing they were bringing people from the dead. Says, yeah, that's a good man. That's a, that's. That's a good so journal truth wherever she's living right now we're going to even, we're going to make this so journal truth day we're going to see if we can get up to the White House to do a press conference with Sojourn. that's how far removed they are from African Americans they don't know our history he's playing on the hope that he can get sympathy yep Johanna he was very calm cool and collect I would have acted the same way in the press conference if I was 
accused of doing blackface. Yes. Uh, y'all, you know, putting the wife there, that always, that don't always work out because you, you put the wife in such a precarious situation. She'd never want to be up there, but she's got to continue to smile and stand by your man like, uh, Bill Clinton did when he had that little scandal. She just stood there and she just, mm, yeah, yeah, I love him. I love him. And then they went to the White House and she went and slept in the basement. <laughs> no, he slept in the basement. She slept in the, in the, in the, uh, Abraham's bedroom, Abraham Lincoln. Okay, so is he going to resign? It's going to be a tough one because you can you see by the press conference he's standing his ground, standing his ground, standing his ground. NAACP is asking him to step down. Even some of his Republicans say step down. It's difficult. It's difficult. He don't want to step down because, number one, it would be a stain in his history, in his legacy, because he's only been the governor for a few months. He's a brand new governor, y'all. It, uh, if you Google him, Google him it, he, it says governor since 2018. <laughs> That's what it says here. Yeah? January 13, 2018. He's the 73rd governor of Virginia. He brand new. What are he going to do? Okay, you mean tell me I'm going to lose my job because, because all those years ago I put on blackface for that? What? Yeah, that's sad. So what he can do, he can sit with the Black Caucus, make a deal. Hey, let's make a deal. Let's, here is his opportunity for Black History Month to make a deal. This is a great opportunity. He's playing on the hope that he can get, yeah, oh, I read that. But he supposedly has not been a, a bad governor for his state for blacks. Yeah, listen, this is my whole point. There's a whole lot of people who don't want him to resign. To be honest with you, I don't want him to resign. But here's the thing. He the governor of Virginia. Let Virginia decide. We got our own governor issues here. We got we got our own problems. We got a new governor. Just he, his, his inauguration is still wet. The last governor, I knew he was only going to serve one term. He shut uh, in uh, Illinois down just like Trump shut the government down this governor did the same thing billionaire leaders they like to shut down governments why they're far removed it doesn't hurt them all right so we in Chicago got our own problems I don't live in Virginia let Virginia make the decision whether to keep them or get them to set them okay that's a state issue but he could use his persuasion and power in his heart and his love for black people to make a change you see don't let him resign and get somebody else in there who hate black folk if he say he love black people the way he did in his press conference let him stay in office and let him reach out to those people and show them of his contract heart mm -hmm. let him show let him prove himself give an opportunity give him one term virginia let the man alone. Let him, let him alone. He said he's, he, he did wear blackface. He, he won the moonwalk contest. I would have loved to see him in Thriller, though. He, he would have been, been funny. And somebody need to find that video. I want to see him in Thriller. See, because if he had done Thriller, we wouldn't have been talking about this because then he'd have on uh, the Walking Dead uh, costume. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's true for Illinois. We're still trying to live with that Pence did before he left off. Come on, Pence. Uh, you mean Pence was uh, Indiana? Uh, you talking about uh, uh, you talking about uh, you know the Rounder? Yeah, that's his name. Yeah. Oh wait, I'm sorry, Johanna. I'm reading your stuff wrong. Uh, yeah, you're right. Indiana Pence. Yeah, and Rounder was Illinois. Yeah, I, I gotta learn how to read. Yeah, me. Yeah, I got. I got. I went to the same school R. Kelly went. <laughs> Okay, that was that was a cheap shot. All right, he says I am I am neither I am not either of the people in the photo. All right, all right. So you heard it from my mouth because people are asking me what do you think about it. Well, I just told you what I think about it. Let Virginia figure it out. Let them figure it out, and then when they figure it out, tell them he got an opportunity to help black folk down there over there. Wherever you are, it might be up, over, down, around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, can y'all help us here in Chicago? We we got problems. We got fifth. We got 
it, it looked like 80 people are running for mayor right now. And we go to the voting booth in just a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Us in Chicago. And we got all these black folks running for uh, mayor. Uh, and Hispanic and whites. Okay. All right. Good. That, that's a, that represents the whole, the, the, the almost. Any Asians running? I don't know. But that represents the city. Unfortunately, this is going to be the craziest election in Chicago. In Chicago's history. Any one of them. Gonna be the mayor because the guy that's in office right now he quit. He he said I'm out. Mm -mm. That last 16 shot situation I can't take. No, I almost lost. I almost lost everything over that. Who I recovered. They put me back in office, but I can't. I can't do that no more. He he said I, I'm out of here. All right, so we getting ready to vote in somebody who well this city is about to change, y'all. Mm. This city about to change. 90. What do you mean 90? What are you talking about 90? Uh, in his gubernatorial campaign, he must not spoke too much on bridging the diversity and racial disparities within Virginia. Michelle Casey. Yeah. I guess I'm going to have to go to YouTube or somewhere or maybe the website of Virginia and listen to his address. Because, oh boy, they're going to be talking about this all day long. Watch. Watch how Fox News spin it, though. Watch. Watch how Fox News spin it. Uh, this should be quite interesting. Uh, black people need to get out and vote. Uh, that's how we turn the tide. That's how we got uh, Harold Washington in office. But watch this, Johanna. We got Harold Washington in office not because we were all went out there and voted. We got Harold Washington in office because we prepared him. Y'all understand what I'm saying? We prepared a man like God does. He prepares one man. <laughs> he prepared uh, Jonah. Not Jonah, Noah. <laughs> Jonah was a fool. Well, he prepared him too. Uh, he, he, it was a fishy situation, but he prepared him. But he prepared one man. All right? Job hated evil. All right? But God use the one guy okay so in Chicago we rallied around one man y'all understand and that's how we got him elected and white folks at that time because I was young I wasn't at the voting age yet but I was quite involved in politics all right I saw how they were telling the cops at the time to arrest black folks for anything if even if they were uh, jaywalking and he looked like he could vote, arrest that fool. They was pulling folk over. I mean, it was crazy. They didn't want y'all going down into the, because they realized y'all prepared one man. And it's like that Malcolm X movie that says, uh, that's too much power for one man. Y'all remember that scene? It was the greatest scene in the movie when they arrested him and all them from the, the N O N O I N O I. The, what is it? What, what, what's their symbol? All the Muslims came down into the jailhouse to get him released, and the chief says, "That's just too much power for one man." Yes. So we prepared Harold Washington, and he said, "Y'all want Harold? Y'all y'all remember that? Y'all want Harold? Well, y'all got Harold, <laughs> and he served two terms." Until I believe they killed the man in office. Okay? Yeah. So now in Chicago, we got 94 running. Divide, 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 divide. So who do black people got? Too many. So what's going to happen? It won't be a representation of all people. It just won't. It just, it just won't. Sorry, y'all. That's just the way it is now. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a sad day, too. Um, what about the secret uh, warehouse in the heart of the South Side that this that's disappeared black men into the prison? Yep, I heard about that, Johanna. I remember that. They've been talking about that for a few years. Yep, I know. They came to the hospital to make sure a black man got proper care. Yes, Maurice Gregory, thank you for that. Yeah, what was... was that was, um, they beat him up, right? In that scene. 
And um Yeah, and, and um when the um uh Malcolm X called all these men, he marched those men down into the hospital. That's right. And then when they did whatever they had to do, put his hands up, and he did that, boop, and all those men on one accord. <laughs> that's the man. Spike Lee. Man, that's, that's bad. That's some bad stuff. And then the, that, that guy says, that's just too much power <laughs> for one black man. That's the greatest scene. Thank you, Maurice, uh, Pastor, for fixing that for me. That's a great scene. Uh, neck bones and Gladys <laughs> at Gladys. Oh, ooh, neck bones at Gladys. <laughs> Y'all remember Gladys on the West Side? Uh, wait, it was a Helens. Wait, it's a, we had Helens and we had Gladys. All right, on West Side of Madison. Is that Madison Avenue? No, is that Madison? I think I think that's Madison and like mm, Kedzie. I think she had two locations, didn't she? All right, anyway. Anyway, so much been going on in Chicago. I can't keep up. I can't keep up. I guess no respect. No respect. We said, how does this dovetail to your lesson today? How does this dovetail? Is that a typo? Hmm? Is that a typo? Yeah, so type it again, Johanna, as I quit. Because I was getting ready to sign off. And you you giving me... I'm, I'm trying to do 30-minute lessons. It's 31 minutes now. Now I got to wait for you to retype that. What's a dovetail? Huh? I know the dovetail is, but what... Huh? Anyway, Madison and Kedzie, yes, not there anymore. That's right. Went under. She closed it down. She retired, and then the son, the son, Demetra, is it the son? Opened up another soul food restaurant in in like Country Club Hills. Kedzie on the west side. Funny. Kids go all the way in the 159th or whatever it is. Okay. The sun opened up one. I forget the name of it. Yeah. Uh, it was on 43rd May Washington, 8th there every day. Yes. What else? We got Captain Hard Times on 79th. Then it was uh, an African uh, fish. Well, I, it's not just a fish place, but African place also on 79, uh, south of the A. Oh man, we we I mean, we had those. There were restaurants that we those soul food restaurants that we were very familiar with. Everybody just just didn't go to to, to eat Greek, go to Greek Town, or go to what was that Greek place uh, in Oaklawn? Everybody, all the church folk went to that one. Theodore's was one of them, right next to Evergreen slash Everblack Plaza, which ain't there no more. Mm, God help us. Bring it on home, Walter. Bring it. I'm bringing it home, Johanna. All right, I just I just wanted to see if y'all had any soul food restaurants that you wanted to, other than um, MacArthur's on the West Side and who else? Who else is out there? Oh, Sabrina's. God help me, I can't forget Sabrina's. I got this. I've got the proprietor of Sabrina's on here. Tyrone Gaston is here. The great bow your heads. All right, I had to bow my head because Sabrina is some of the best eating in the world. That's on the, the south suburbs. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get some good good eating, it ain't Atlanta, Georgia, y'all. You got to come to Chicago for some real home-style cooking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Got to go. Bless it to you, Darren Walls and Alexis and McIntyre and the rest. All right? So pray for Virginia because they got to make a decision. They about to possibly lose. The pressure might be too much on him. Yes, Priscilla's hillside. Who could forget Priscilla's? Oh, Lord. Oh, Priscilla, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, the governor may resign because if the pressure is too much on him, he may have to resign. So they're going to get a new guy. Oh, boy. That might be a problem. Just like Donald Trump. Y'all might lose Trump, but you got Pence. That's a bigger problem. Because he know what he doing. <laughs> he don't like you. And... He intelligent enough to go with the flow. And he say stuff that he know he's saying it, and it makes sense. See, his hatred towards you makes sense. <laughs> that makes him worse than a clown bigot. <laughs> See, a clown bigot, he all over the place. 
All right, y'all. It's Black History Month, so you white people who are watching, I'm sorry. This is going to be over in just a few more days, okay? Hold on, white folks. Hold on as long as you can. We ain't got this, but the shortest month in the year is about 20 days in <laughs> Black History Month, all right? Hold on for about 20 days, okay? And it'll all be over. We'll get back to singing, uh, holding hands with you and singing Kumbaya, okay? All right? Yep. Pence is the real demon. <laughs> Demetrius, Demetrius said that. I ain't say it. I got to read a more uh, inspirational uh, comment before I, because I like to let y'all have the last say. Who got an inspirational something that I can say and then I can say, you got the last word. All right? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Somebody please say something inspirational while I, I sip my Jesus juice. So, somebody say something inspirational. I can't end on that note. YouTube, how you doing? Let's, I'm going to talk to you while they typing over there. You can't see the comments, YouTube. I'm sorry. One day they're going to find a way for them to get to type the, the names, the comments in there where YouTube gets to see. And y'all can play along with it. Okay, Demetrius said something. Sorry, YouTube. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I said it. God is still good. Okay. <laughs> All right. That would be the last say, but Johanna said, it's on you, bruh. Yeah, I like that one better. It's Black History Month. Bruh. Bye-bye.